Hey everyone, this is Ross from CryptoCrane. Today I'll be showing how to set up the recently released Antminer L3 Plus Litecoin Miner from Bitmain. I'll also answer some of the questions we often receive regarding mining pools, as well as show you how to configure the miner's built-in web interface. Just like the first batch we received in May, the July batch arrived in great condition despite shipping all the way from Shenzhen, China. Hmm, looks important. I should probably save this. Whoa! So shiny. Well, it certainly looks and feels like the last L3 Plus I reviewed. Here we see the controller and logic board with one power connector and four ribbon cables connecting to each of the four hashing boards. Each hashing board has two power connectors as well, bringing the total number of six pin PCI Express power connectors to nine. You don't want to select a power supply that has fewer. I have no idea why anyone would care how much these weigh, but if you're curious, they're just under 10 pounds. Selecting the right power supply is extremely important. I've chosen to use the brand new APW3++ power supply from Bitmain, which has 10 power connectors and was specifically designed for the L3+. There's also a version of the APW3++ that has 18 power connectors. It can run two L3+'s at the same time as long as you're connected to a 220 volt power circuit or higher. It can output up to 1600 watts when connected to a 220 volt or higher power circuit. Unlike the previous versions of the APW3, it is also capable of supplying 1200 watts when it's using a standard 110 volt outlet, which is far more than the 800 watt advertised power draw for the L3+. Always make sure to connect the power supply to the miner before plugging the power supply into a wall outlet. Notice that my watt meter is measuring my power source as 234 volts. Before powering it on, connect an Ethernet cable from the front of the L3 Plus to your router or switch. No, these don't have built-in Wi-Fi. Yes, you can use a Wi-Fi bridge that has an Ethernet port. However you connect it, just make sure it has access to the internet. I'm often asked how much bandwidth these miners consume. This will vary depending on a lot of factors, but it rarely goes above 5 kilobit per second. Running this 24-7 would use between 0.4 and 1.7 gigabyte of total bandwidth in a month. Let's just fast forward a little bit. Doo -doo -doo. Did I mention that these guys are loud? Take note of the decibel meter on the left. During the startup sequence, the noise level easily reaches decibel levels into the high 70s, but quickly drops to around 70 decibels after it actually starts mining. Though still loud, the L3 Plus actually sounds noticeably quieter than the Antminer S9 series. Like most previous iterations of the Antminer series, there are dual 120mm fans that dynamically adjust speed depending on the internal temperature. The front fan is for intake and usually runs at 3500 RPM, while the rear exhaust fan typically rotates at a slower 2200 RPM. Notice that the miner starts ramping up the power just after the 2 minute mark as shown by the watt meter to the right. It's amazing how powerful and efficient these guys are. Each of the four hashing boards contains 72 custom ASIC chips that can each hash at 1.75 mega hashes per second. To put into perspective just how mind boggling fast this is, one would need roughly 500 ultra high end GPUs to mine Litecoin or other script based coins as fast as the single L3+. Plus. It's kind of funny having more hashing power sitting on my dining room table than a data center sized mining farm. At this point, the miner has completely ramped up and should be hashing at the full 504 mega hashes per second. Using this power supply on a high voltage circuit, the power load appears to be maxing out at around 750 watts. That's a full 50 watts better than the 800 watt requirement Bitmain advertises. This is unexpected since my first L3 Plus review using the APW5 power supply showed that the miner needed the full 800 watts. When's the last time a manufacturer overestimated the power requirements on a miner? I'm pleasantly surprised to say the least. We'll have to do some testing to determine the reason for the increased power efficiency in a moment. Due to the capacitors inside of the power supply, you'll notice that the fan will keep spinning for a while even after disconnecting the power. To show that the APW3++ can support the L3 Plus while using a standard US power outlet, 
I'm going to switch the input from my high voltage circuit to a regular outlet in my home. As you can see on the watt meter, the screen is showing 122 volts. Well, would you look at that! Using the same power supply on a regular 110 to 120 volt circuit requires the full 800 watts. A 50 watt difference only adds up to a few dollars per month, so it's probably not worth having an electrician install high voltage circuits in your home unless you intend to run lots of these at once. So far so good. Hooking it up has been easy, but now we need to configure it. To find the IP, you can either log into your router directly and view the list of connected devices, or you can use one of several free network scanning tools, such as this tool called Advanced IP Scanner. There are dozens of different network scanning apps available, and some are even available from your phone. I've linked to the one that I've used in the description for reference. After the utility has finished scanning your network, it will show you a list of all the devices it found. Look for the one called AntMiner and note the IP address. Next, open your web browser and type the IP address into the address bar. Please note that you can only reach this IP address while you're on the same network as the miner. The default username and password are both root. The first thing that we'll want to do is go to the miner configuration tab. Here we'll enter our pool information. If you haven't joined a mining pool yet, there are some things you need to know. First, a mining pool is just a group of miners that collectively work together to solve a block on the blockchain. Each miner gets paid a fraction of the block reward proportional to the amount of work one's miner submitted. Second, there are so many pools out there that I couldn't possibly hope to cover them in this video. Instead, I'll focus on some of the high-level decisions you'll need to make. To begin, you'll need to decide if you want to mine coins directly or sell your hashing power. There are pools such as NiceHash.com that will automatically sell your hashing power to others and pay you in Bitcoin. The advantage is that usually you earn more than you would have just by mining Litecoin. If you do decide to just mine Litecoin, I would suggest trying out litecoinpool.org. They're one of the best and have great support and how-to guides. Finally, there is the option to mine some of the other popular script-based altcoins. Mining altcoins definitely has the potential to be the most profitable option. It's also a little more insulated from surges in mining difficulty on the Litecoin network. There are even automatic profit switching pools such as ProHashing.com or Multipool.us that will always have you mining the most profitable coins. In this example, I've decided to use ProHashing.com as my primary pool due to their ability to automatically sell the mined altcoins and pay me in my coin of choice, which happens to be Litecoin. They even support connecting to one's Coinbase account to receive payouts in US dollars. Once you've finished entering all of your pool and worker information, click the Save and Apply button. The mining engine will restart and begin using the new settings. On the Advanced Settings tab, you'll notice options for changing the frequency that the ASIC chips run at. The default is 384 MHz. If you select a higher value, you will avoid your warranty. Proceed at your own risk here. The Miner Status tab will show the miner's real-time hashing speed and average hashing speed since startup. You'll also notice that it shows the pool health status and information about the ASIC chips themselves. It's important to note that the temperature sensors on the ASIC chips are known to not be very accurate. It's not uncommon to see a wide temperature variance between different sensors. 10 hours later, the L3 Plus has been happily mining away without me having to pay any attention to it. It appears to have reached an average hash rate of 500 mega hashes per second, which is slightly lower than the 504 mega hashes per second advertised, but well within reason. To verify that my decision to mine the most profitable script-based altcoins was indeed the best option, I decided to run a test. For 24 hours, I ran this L3 Plus on ProHashing.com's auto profit switching pool and set it to convert everything to Litecoin. At the same time, I set another L3 Plus to mine Litecoins directly with litecoinpool.org. From ProHashing.com's earnings dashboard, I can see my real-time worker stats in the top left panel. As you can see, the pool is measuring the miner submitted shares of work and estimates that it is mining at 508 mega hashes per second. Now let's look at the balances panel at the top right. I have my auto payout threshold configured to automatically withdraw my earnings to my offline wallet each time my balance reaches 1 Litecoin. At the 24 hour mark, I've earned a total of 1.31 Litecoins. At today's rates, that's roughly $55 worth. If this were to continue without changing, it would earn between $15 and $1600 per month, and that's after paying for electricity. Of course, 
Everyone knows that this is a highly volatile market and these numbers could increase or decrease significantly in a short amount of time. Let's go see how well our other L3 Plus has done. Litecoinpool.org is seeing a similar speed of 507 mega hashes per second coming from the other L3 Plus, but it has only mined 0.683 Litecoin in the last 24 hours. It would have done a little better if I had chosen to sell the hashing power at NiceHash.com, but this test proves that mining other script-based altcoins are currently the most profitable mining option for the L3 Plus by a significant margin. Needless to say, the powerful combination of profitability and limited availability has made the L3 Plus one of the most sought-after mining devices of the year. If you're looking for a trusted American distributor with a 100% feedback rating and who specializes in mining hardware, then check out CryptoCrane on Amazon using the link in the description.